Hi guys, how's everybody doing? Let's uh, let's do something a little different today. Let's uh, let's make some ribs. The I'm all yucky after work, so I'm just going to show the ribs. Uh, I'm going to make my rub right now, and for my rub, I use uh, ground mustard, smoked paprika. Let's see, a touch of cumin, uh, salt, and pepper. Pretty simple, makes a, a really great rub. And I kind of use equal parts of, of everything. And I was at the store, usually I use fresh peppercorns, but they had coarse ground pepper on sale, so I'm gonna be lazy and just use already made up stuff. Because it takes a lot of grinding to grind up as much pepper as I use to make a rub. Okay, these are the back side of the ribs and I peeled off the membrane to start. Let's see. We'll take a little bowl and we need some measuring spoons. Let's see, I've got two racks of ribs this size, so I use equal parts of each, so I'm going to put two tablespoons of coarse ground black pepper, two tablespoons of salt. I know that sounds like a lot of salt, but it doesn't taste real salty once you once it's all been barbecued. One, two. Okay, then we're going to use two. Two tablespoons of smoked paprika. One. And that stuff smells so yummy. Two. And smoked paprika, it, it has some chili in it. It's got a little bit of spice to it, so. Oops, I'm gonna leave. So, uh. Uh. That, that. My, my ribs are. The way I make them, they're. They've got just a little bit of kick to them. Nothing major, nothing that would. Make you have to drink a bunch of beer or something to cool your mouth off, but a little bit of spice. One, two tablespoons of dried mustard, and that's really the main ingredients. I like cumin in it. A lot of people don't like cumin, so you don't have to add that. And I don't put a ton of that in there, just a little bit to bring some flavor out. Let's see, I use. This little guy here, this little this thing to mix up all the spices. And you can, like a lot of people, some people like to, to put their spices on maybe the night before and let their ribs sit in the refrigerator. And that, that, there's nothing wrong with doing that whatsoever, uh, whatever you prefer. But I would advise if you're gonna do that, do not put salt in your rub because salt dries things out, draws moisture out. So you wouldn't want to leave that like that uh, overnight to make your ribs more dry. So just add your salt in the morning before you put them on the grill and there you go. And what we're going to do, we're going to coat these and I'm kind of doing this is maybe a little bit of like a kind of a cross between a, a Memphis dry rub style and kind of a Texas type of rib see I, I where I've grown up it's I, I kind of grew up in one part of the country that I moved to Texas and so different different kind of styles I kind of combine the two and I'll make my own barbecue sauce. I'll show you guys what I how I make that. It's I make a savory, spicy barbecue sauce, not a sweet, and it's kind of runny. It's definitely a Texas style barbecue sauce. I like that a lot better than the than the sweet stuff. And I don't put any barbecue so sauce on my ribs while I'm uh, cooking them. I uh, simply put this rub on and 
and then I use uh, some red wine vinegar and I'll put some of that in a bowl and I'll put the same spices in that and what I'll do is I'll put that on the grill and, and low and slow I'll use a Weber and I'll, I'll show you guys that but low and slow uh, just make some charcoals on the side with a couple of blocks of hickory in it to give it some smoke and let that draw across it for about four hours and then uh, uh, draw the heat through it and slowly cook it and then like the first two hours I don't do anything I just leave it be and then every hour after that I mop it so I, I put red wine vinegar in a bowl the same spices in a bowl well, I hope I'm not been blocking the whole video <laughs> uh, put the same spices in a bowl with red wine vinegar and I use a, a paintbrush and I mop on mop that on every hour after that so and then when that's done then I wrap it in foil and I, I toss a little bit more of the mopping sauce in the foil and then I I put some more coals in and I heat it up and, and then I I steam the ribs inside the foil and they come out really nice and, and tender uh, fall off the bone tender we could say but also not they're not mushy they still have a meaty texture to them uh, I, I don't like ribs that have been boiled uh, I always use a, a charcoal grill I don't I, I don't really I have a gas stove right here you can see that I don't see much point in having another one outside that I have to buy more gas for it's just but that's just my my preference a lot of people really like gas grills and good for you it's definitely nice to have so you don't have to warm up the house to cook but we cook on the grill all the time especially when it's hot out I can cook up some pork chops or some brats or just some burgers and hot dogs even and cook up enough to have for lunches and supper again the next night so you only got to cook a couple of times a week and it's, it tastes really good and that's what we like to do okay there are our the ribs got all the rub on them. Clear that. See, we got a little spot we missed there. Okay. There, our ribs are all rubbed up. Ooh, look at that big spot that I missed. See that big slab of meat there? That one's going to get done really quick. I'm going to leave it loose like that, and then I can pull that off there and eat it while the rest of it's cooking. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll cut that off and I'm going to do the same thing to this other uh, rack of ribs and I will show you what it looks like when we're done. You're not going on the grill. Okay, I got the, the grill going. I'll show you how I do that. Uh, see the, I just kind of like one corner there and throw a chunk of wood on there, get the smoke going. And let the, see about, I like this corner and then it'll burn all the way across. There's a big old grill full of meat. The Weber Grill Master. Uh, like one of my only gripes is uh, uh, the thermometer is opposite the chimney. I wish it was kind of like a quarter out or something because then I have to put the thermometer right over the heat. I don't get the best reading, but that's okay. Not that big a deal. I like to put the stuff on one side. Let the smoke and heat draw across that away. Put the baffles just a little bit open on the bottom. And uh, we'll be back in a couple hours and check on them and start the mopping. Okay, let's make some barbecue sauce now. Uh, we're going to put in, and this is a savory barbecue sauce, not a, not a, uh, a sweet barbecue sauce. So one or eight ounces of tomato sauce. Uh, I get mine at the dollar store. I don't think it tastes any different than the, the stuff that comes from Ralph's and costs three times as much. Uh, a half cup of brown sugar. I use extra dark. Also, we will put in a half cup of ketchup. It's a lot of squeezing, huh? Okay, there's a half cup of ketchup. Then 
then we will put in, let's see, two and a half tablespoons of white vinegar. One, two, I guess a half. It's not going to tell us if we're a little more or a little less. That's how you know it's homemade, right? Let's see, then we want uh, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. One. Two. And let me rinse this off. Let's see, then we need uh, a teaspoon of fresh cracked pepper. We have that. And let's see, then we need a teaspoon of garlic. And I like uh, this, this roasted garlic powder. I think it has a really good flavor, but it doesn't really matter. Whatever you prefer. So we'll put in a teaspoon of that. Okay. And then we're going to put in... A quarter teaspoon of cumin. Okay, we got that. And finally, for just a little bit more heat, because remember we already got the black pepper in it. That, that'll bring a little bit of heat. And we'll put in an eighth, I like an eighth teaspoon, kind of a heaping teaspoon of a uh, cayenne pepper. And you can subtract or add a little more to your taste, obviously. And that's really it. A super simple, easy barbecue sauce. Uh, once you've got the ingredients, you buy the spices if you don't have them. The, the ketchup is the most expensive thing in the whole thing. Uh, uh, you, you have enough barbecue sauce to make bottles and bottles. And I whip up this much every time. And to me, the way I barbecue, I think the meat, the barbecue sauce is a condiment. You dip it in it. I don't like my, my meat uh, uh, smothered in barbecue sauce. I think it should taste good without any barbecue sauce on it. And barbecue sauce adds to the flavor, I guess. And uh, here is the, let me show you this. Here's the, the mopping sauce. Hopefully you can see in there. It's just red wine vinegar and, and those same spices that I put in the rub. St stinky, I don't like the smell of vinegar. <laughs> and the, anyway, the barbecue sauce, you just stir it all up and then you bring it to a simmer for 30 minutes just a very light simmer obviously that kind of thickens it up just a little bit but it's not going to be like a thick sauce like you're used to in the from the store uh, it's, it's kind of a thinner sauce it's not like super thin but it's thinner it's a little bit runny and uh, it'll stay about this consistency right here Mm, it smells good already, but let's turn it on. Oops, wrong burner. Turn it way down. Okay. There, we got our barbecue sauce on. We got our ribs on the grill. We got our mopping sauce ready. And all we got to do is wait. Keep adding the... Uh, Mopping sauce every couple hours, wrap them in foil, do the last two hour cook, and we will have some bomb ass ribs. So I'll catch you guys in a while when I do the mopping. Well, here's the, the barbecue sauce, and I forgot to tell you one ingredient. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I put in uh, two tablespoons of lemon juice or I'm sure you could use a concentrated stuff, but why would you when you could just go get a fresh lemon and they taste so yummy cooked in things? So I just squeeze one half of a lemon's worth of juice. That's that's about two tablespoons, a little more or less. And uh, if you cook the way I do, directions are just a starting point, right? <laughs> just a good idea. You, you add a little more of this and a little less of that, or you might even toss in some of this or that. And if you don't like... Uh, if you like more of a sweeter barbecue sauce, you might uh, 
cut back on the Worcester sire or delete it all together and put in some honey and uh, it cuts cut some of the pepper and in, in the, the cayenne pepper down a little bit and uh, that'll give you a lot sweeter sauce or, or add a little white sugar or brown more brown sugar if you like it's totally your yours to experiment with I just uh, barbecue sauce is what like three bucks for a, a bottle of it that doesn't last all that long I probably spent 50 cents making that <laughs> I mean literally it's it's not that much and that's a uh, you can you can put this in a jar or a, a empty ketchup bottle and it'll stay in the refrigerator for quite a while I've never had enough I never had it around I don't make a ton of it at a time but I've never had it wrong, around long enough to go bad I always eat it up quickly and uh, so I'm gonna cut y'all loose and I'll bring you back when we're looking at the ribs okay I lied here I wanted to come back real quick and one of the cool things about ribs is they take forever to cook so it's totally okay to have you uh, a beer while you're waiting for the ribs okay guys here's the ribs after two hours I opened it up and it made the would start to catch on fire as you can see they're getting a nice and smoky I'm gonna mop them that's my mopping sauce I was showed you earlier just dab it on real good and now from here on out every every hour these guys will get this for oh about another two hours it keeps burning I don't want that put it out. As soon as I close the lid it'll, it won't do no more burning. But that's all you have to do and I'll flip these over and do the, do the same to the bottom side. And one of the neat things about this style of grill is, see my wood's just about burn up, but open this side here to add more blocks of wood so it'll stay nice and smoky in there but anyway uh, I'm going to put you down and get busy with the cooking again and I'll show you everything when they're all done okay so now we got the the ribs off the grill they've been on for uh, three, four, five, six, five hours and They've been nice and smoky. I did a little taste. They are awesome. And we're going to mop them again one more time and put them on the grill for two more hours. Wrapped up in tin foil, which will steam them, and that will finish getting them uh, nice and tender. And uh, I'll show you when they're all done. Okay. Ribs are all done. And they've been resting for about 20 minutes. So... Let's uh, let's take a look at what we got. Let's just try cutting one right here. Look at that. Look how tender that is. Ouch, they're hot. Fall off the bone tender. There's a big old piece there. Let's see, you can see the, you can see the smoke. See the smoke ring in the in the meat there, nice and tender. Oh my goodness! I really outdid myself. <laughs> Those are yummy. Let's try some in the barbecue sauce. So good. Well, if you never tried making ribs on the grill, there's a nice little how-to, and they'll come out good if you follow those directions. I promise. And I am going to stuff my belly full. Lots of love, guys. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye.